live stream, so you'll click that little thing. And you got to click that up front where it says. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone, and welcome Hi. to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day two of Longevity Week, where we are featuring prominent vegan influencers in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s who have been vegan not only for a long time, but are aging gracefully, literally turning back the hands of time to look and feel their best as they age. And today we have the absolutely stunning, beautiful Karen Calabrese, who at 75 looks, I don't know, at least 20, I would say at least 25 years younger than her stated age. It's hard to really believe that she is that age, but who am I to argue? Please welcome Karen to the show. It's so nice to see you. You, you really have time stands still with you. Well, you know what? Actually, it stands still for all of us how you treat this temple, this magnificent machine you've been given, because I'm not special. I like to remind people that I've got the same, not, you know, the blood, the kidney, it's what you do to take care of the magnificent instrument you've been given. And so much of what we do is just have it, or we don't even think twice about it. And I like to remind people, once this is gone, you got nothing. So I put all my time, my energy, my money, my life into me, and by doing that, with that selfishness, I'm able to help so many more people. So you know, I want to congratulate you because I, I, three weeks ago, I was celebrating my vegan anniversary, 45 years being vegan, but you've got me beat, Karen. I believe it's 50 years for you, not only as a vegan, but a raw vegan. Well, I'm older than you, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> You know, not by, not by much. So, you know, so congratulations because of all the people you've helped and all the animals you've saved. I mean, who knew, I, I know that you knew Ann Wigmore, but who knew 50 years ago, I was 12 years old to, to follow a raw vegan diet. Well, I didn't just know her. She used to come and stay with me in my home. Uh, there was a place in Michigan called the Creative Health Institute. And we would go up there yesterday, uh, every year. I'd get a bus. Um, I'd rent one of those school buses and I'd pick a bunch of people from Chicago and we'd go up to Creative Health Institute. She would stay with me in the interim. And I was kind of like her. I just follow around and whatever she wanted me to do, whatever, I was there. And I soaked up so much of not just her knowledge, but just her attitude for life, you know, and how she took care of herself. She was 87, she did cartwheels. All right, I'm going to listen to somebody that can do cartwheel with 87. I'm going to follow around. I'm not going to necessarily listen to a, a ball hairdresser. I know it's in now or toothless dentist or blind. <laughs> you know, I want the person to represent what it is I want to do. And Dr. Wigmore did it all the way around. She was running businesses. She was running all over the world speaking. And she could do cartwheels. So wait, wait, how did you meet her? And, and what was she like as a person? Because you don't really see videos of her. Oh, you don't know it was before all of this was popular. So I have been a vegetarian and I had learned, you know, learned about vegetarianism. And I thought, wow, I'm really doing great. And I was happy and vegan, but nobody was talking about it 15 years ago. And I was dabbling. And uh, I had a friend who was a flight attendant. And I was telling her about what I was doing. And I was about maybe nine years, nine years into it or whatever, seven, eight years into it. And she said, well, do you do wheatgrass? And I said, wheatgrass, what's wheatgrass? And then she proceeded to tell me all about it. Well, I immediately went out all of Dr. Ann Whitmore's books that I could find. And I started growing wheatgrass hydroponically in my apartment, much to my children's uh, fear, I mean, anger. I mean, they were so upset Nicole's mother grows grass in the house, you know. But I was growing wheatgrass in the house. And one day I decided to call her at her place in uh, Boston. And we started talking on the phone. And I ended up going out there, doing her detox, becoming raw. And then we just became best friends. And I don't know, she was one of the loves of my life. I'll tell you that. And she used to call me her little human angel. So, and I know you're also a big fan. I, I hope I can pronounce his last name right. Victor, Col I can't say his last name. That's right. He was the partner in crime with all this. And Victor is still living. He lives in Costa Rica. Some of your fans may know that a few years ago, Jeffrey Juicer and I went to Costa Rica and did a retreat there. Was incredible. So Victor lives there. He actually teaches classes there. He takes some people. You can go stay with him. He's got an incredible place um, up in the uh, in Costa Rica with waterfalls and all kinds of things. So you know, I can you can message me. You can go see him. He's my teacher. 
He wrote Survival in the 21st Century, which was one of the first books I ever read about veganism and raw foods, and it's still extremely relevant now. I wonder if he'd be open to being on my show sometime because he's considered the father of raw food, isn't he? Yes, I've been talking to him. <laughs> well, I see you're doing something with some mushrooms, and, and I love that tool that you're using. I can't think of the name of it, but I, that's a great tool. No, I'm just joking. I am so not a chef, chef. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I try to use as many things as I can to make it simple and easy because I don't have those kind of skills. But I, um, this is a surla top. It's just a little thing you can cut and dice with, and then it makes it easy for scooping up the mushrooms. So today I'm going to make chili, a raw chili for you. And uh, it's got some great components to it to kind of help keep you warm. Uh, if you live in the Chicago area or New York or someplace where it's about to be very cold. So. That was my biggest difficulty for the two years I was raw was feeling cold all the time. Well, you should have called me because I would have told you to add ginger. I would have told you to add cayenne pepper to your foods. I would have told you to put some cayenne pepper in your socks between your shoes and your feet. It warms up the whole body. I would have given you some great advice. So next time you're stuck, give me a call. I did not know you 20 years ago, but thank you for that. Wow, putting chili in your socks. So knock your socks off. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure you put a small amount. You don't want it to be too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I bet just to prepare for today, I, I was listening to a lot of podcasts you did. And it, it, your husband does not follow your way of eating, but yet you've had a successful marriage for many years. He smokes cigarettes, okay? <laughs> oh my, but like, he, it's like he's the opposite of you. He is the total, well, but he is probably 85, 90% plant-based because I don't, I can't have the animals in my house. You can bring your dogs and cats and all your living turtles, whatever, birds, fish, but you can't bring steak and hot dogs and burgers and things into my house. And one other little side, um, I, I don't know if that's something I'm supposed to say, but I could never be intimate with anybody that ate meat because you smell differently. You don't realize it. So when I met, met my husband 39 years ago, and when it was getting to that point, I said, well, you know, I can't sleep with anybody that eats meat. He says, okay, I'll give it up. <laughs> <laughs> for you for you it's worth it for sure <laughs> but but i'm never going to feel like you about it and the interesting oh. story goes along with that so he did he gave up red meat and chicken he continued to have fish he gave up red meat and chicken and for about the first six years he would go play poker with a bunch of guys at a hotel and um right at the, they decided to switch to somebody's house and just as they did that he and i went to the person's house and the wife was cooking steak and he got physically nauseous from it, not, you know, just because it wasn't a part of him anymore. And I like to remind people, it isn't a natural human instinct to eat dead flesh. We just learn to do it. And so it feels okay. And everybody around you is doing it. It's so convenient and easy, but it isn't natural to human beings to eat dead flesh. So he smelled his dead flesh, but, and he literally got physically ill. And if you know my husband, it's like, you think you can have some cigarettes for you to smell, right? But didn't do any good. He had to leave. So... Yeah. Well, I remember the story you told about one time you were cooking chicken soup and then you saw the meat separating from the bone and you really got that that was an, a, you know, a different animal. That was the beginning of my journey. Uh, I had, my mother had introduced me to carrot juice because I was constipated my whole life as a child. I had terrible skin. I was, I was a mess. Uh, so, and my mother had taken me to doctors and they said, uh, well, it's just her body, but I'm here to tell you folks what goes in must come out. If it doesn't, where did it go and what's it doing to you? So my mother had read somewhere that carrot juice or juices could, you know, help you to go. So she brought me some carrot juice and I started making and being a slightly obsessive compulsive person. I, am, I started drinking gallons of carrot juice, right? And I don't recommend that to anybody else in the beginning of their journey that has so much sugar. But I was drinking gallons of pooping and my skin was clearing and everything was just incredible. And uh, so I was making chicken soup for the family one day and I've been drinking all this juice. I think it was like 19, 19 18, 19, somewhere. And I, uh, and I had thrown the chicken in the pot and I went back to throw the vegetables in and everything had separated. And I just got this epiphany that what was I doing? There was an animal I was throwing in this pot. I was boiling him. His bones were, I mean, it just, and I was, you know, that was the beginning of my whole vegetarian journey. I was just never able to do it. But I didn't make a conscious choice. 
It was the evolution of what was coming to me in my life. So drinking all the living foods, I no longer could tolerate dead flesh. That simple. I couldn't look at it. I couldn't see it. I couldn't smell it. And um, so most people don't understand, which if I can do a quick commercial here, I'm going to be doing a nine day, I'm calling it revival classes to revive people of um, where, where they are and what they know. And it's kind of like a detox, but it's showing you, it's giving you a chance to go plant-based for nine days. I'm just asking for nine short days out of your life. You go plant-based, uh, you'll get some product of mine to help you along the way to balance blood sugar levels and that kind of thing. And I will be doing a food prep class for two of the classes and we'll be meeting and doing a discussion. So it's kind of cool. I moved to a new area. I'm out here in Flossmoor, South Silver Road, Chicago. And I can see it's needed. Nobody's doing this kind of thing out there necessarily, or at least that I see. So I've got a nine day and it starts next Monday and we will be streaming it also. If anybody's interested, you can go to my um, website, shopkarens.com shopkarens or go to my e-blast or I'm not really up on all this stuff yet. So <laughs> I'm going to let it go there. Well, that, that sounds fabulous. Do you ever hang with my friend, Dr. Terry Mason? Well, we just did a lot together. You know, Dr. Mason started his whole journey in one of my detox classes about 25 years ago. Uh, I met him up on the north side, and we just did a live together. He doesn't live out this way, but he's a part of a group called Mother Cars Farm. And it's a church group where they grow vegetables in this area where it's not, you know, it brings uh, food uh, in this kind of food desert where it is. And they grow vegetables and they distribute it. And Dr. Uh, Mason is on the board of that. He really helps them out a lot. So I'd like to give a shout out to Mother Cars Farm too. They do great work. We're going to use them in the restaurant open, so we're going to have farm table food from Mother Cars Farm. I love him because, you know, he's lost quite a bit of weight eating healthfully. Absolutely. We all can be <laughs> healthfully. You know, it's amazing. I, being a raw foodist, I can sometimes get too tiny because when you eat raw living foods, it doesn't take much to fill you up. And so, and I'm always running around. I, mean, I sleep four and a half hours a night. I'm opening up a new business at 75. I just opened up the spa and I'm opening up the restaurant and I'm starting classes again. And so I have all of this energy <laughs> that I just have to keep doing stuff. I'll, I'll never retire. I don't know what it is. So when you eat raw, you have all of this energy. I don't want to call it excessive energy because I love getting so much done. No, but, if that is that is true because the two years I was raw, I really, I really didn't need sleep. It's it, I don't know why is that you think? Because the body needs sleep to repair itself. The less repaired, the less sleep. You know, like if you go out drinking or you have a big meal or when you got to sleep, sleep, sleep to sleep it off because your liver and your kidneys are doing all this work to try to process all of this. I mean, this human body, you hold up your fist, this is the size of your stomach. It was a tiny little pack in there. That's it. And so whatever size your fist is, that's the amount of food you need. We don't need, in fact, that's what's wrong with everything. Everybody's overeating. You're giving your body so much work to do. The digestive system is the hard, it's one of the hardest working systems in the body. And you just run it all day. And every, even I see some of my plant-based raw, you know, <laughs> sisters and brothers with trials of food like this. And I think you do need to start out with a lot because it's an emotional thing too, making those kind of changes for yourself. But we're not intended to eat the huge amounts of food, plant-based, animal, carnivore, whatever, that most humans are eating on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. eat, I know I, Dr. Dr. Furman would agree with you that most people overeat, even if they're not overweight, most people are overeating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, overeat or not a skinny little girl, you know, because I wasn't getting any nutrients. When you're right. not getting to the body, you're hungry. Absolutely. Uh, Linda saying the tool you're using is called a bench chopper and scraper. Good to know the official name. Thank you, Linda. Scraper. Now I can talk about it. I love it. You know, you know, uh, even though this is only day two of longevity week, what I'm noticing because I, I know most of the speakers well that are coming on is that in addition to avoiding animal products, whether they're uh, raw or not raw, they also avoid things like sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. How important are, do you think it's, it is to not have those things if you're trying to age beautifully and gracefully like you have? You couldn't pay me to drink coffee. <laughs> I don't touch sugar. I don't even do most of the uh, natural sugars, the honey. I know some people have a problem with the agave 
or I, do, I will do some monk fruit because of the way it metabolizes the system and I like sugars. I don't care for stevia, but that would be the other one I would recommend for people. So you couldn't pay me to do sugar. You couldn't pay me to do caffeine. And what was the other one? Alcohol. Oh, you couldn't pay me to drink. So <laughs> here's the deal. Alcohol converts to sugar in your body. So a lot ago when I decided to give up um, uh, sugar, I was like, well, do I want alcohol or a piece of vegan raw chocolate cake? So I went with the chocolate cake because that's what you're doing every time you have that old glass of wine. And all wines, all alcohol is not but vegan either. It's, it's not awesome. vegan. People don't realize that, that most alcohol, unless they're buying it from John Sally's line, is not vegan. People think it is, but it's not. It goes through fish gills and all kinds of stuff. To Crustacean drink. shells, absolutely. The bladder of a sturgeon. It's really bizarre how they even think to use animals in those horrific ways. But yes, thank you for saying that. You know, Karen, a lot of people are saying you're stunning, you're gorgeous, but a lot of people think you look this good because it's genetic. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, my nose, and you can go with my genetics, the color of my eyes, my genetics, but the non-wrinkling of my skin and the brown, I know they say black don't crack, that's the thing, but so many of my sisters are in such trouble that I, I won't even go there. No, all the women in my family died overweight and very young. My mother died at 47, and she introduced me to the carrot juice and couldn't get her after that. My grandmother did, uh, died at 50, and my great-grandmother at 60. So women weren't known for longevity in my family, and I could see the writing on the wall. And uh, I just have been very blessed to meet the right people at the right time in my evolution of my soul and life here that I just jump on the bandwagon and keep going because there for the grace of God, I should be gone also. And I have had numerous challenges over the years. I don't go into it because you don't just go from A to Z overnight. I know we'd like to think all of a sudden I'm eating some sprouts or whatever. Uh, why are not I healthy? Well, how many years did you eat steak before you came to the sprout? You know, you're still part of everything that you are, which is why detoxification is so important. I have a nine day class coming up, but it's so important to give the body something different and to break up habits and different shifts that are going body over and over again you're not even thinking about what you're doing you know it's, it's good to realign and get in touch with yourself again because there's nobody else that can do it but you so you know you need to put all your time your energy your money into you and then you have so much more to give the world yeah. You know, it's so funny. I'll, I'll, I'm not funny, but people will say, you know, they, oh, I've been vegan for a certain amount of time, but I got cancer and they don't realize the 50, 60 years they were smoking and drinking and eating animal products. And then they blame the vegan diet for not working. Well, and, and it's because like I said, I have it over here. You don't go from A to Z overnight and getting that, you didn't all of a sudden wake up with cancer. You didn't all of a sudden, it took you time, food and energy to get there. And so it is a process. We're kind of born somewhere where we kind of eat our way down here. But to get back up here, you have to go through a lot of the stuff, funny story, so I don't do the marijuana or drug either. But you know what, when I first started doing the whole process, because I'm from the 60s and 70s, believe me, I did my share. Um, when I started cleaning up, I started going through some of those things that I went through, because you go through a lot to get back up here that you went through to get down here. So I think the most important thing to get across to people making the transition and changing is you don't go from A to Z overnight. Uh, it takes nine months before you get before you're born. Everything is a process in life. And we have to learn to understand and appreciate the process because this is what we're here for. We're not here to have the most money, the best business, the best children, the best health. We're here for the evolution of our soul. And whatever comes your way, it's for that involvement. It's for that change. It's for getting on something new, putting it and seeing how it works for you and going forward. Absolutely. Well, uh, Casey, who's watching live, wants to know, do you have a specific workout or stretch routine that you do every day? Yes. Um, well, here's the most important routine that I do every day. I don't go near my telephone before 9 a.m. I'm up at 5.30. I will not answer a call. I will not uh, respond to a text because this is my morning I'm gathering myself and putting everything. I do a ceremony while I read Hotra. It's a Vedic ceremony, a fire ceremony. And it's about when the curtains are pulled back between heaven and earth and the energy that flows. So I do that every morning. Uh, I do a whole series of prayers and meditations. I have a power plate in my house. I've done yoga for over 40 years, although my body is very stiff right now. Four years ago, I broke my shoulder in 17 places. Then I broke this shoulder, broke my kneecap. I was on a walker. 
I couldn't dress myself. And here I am at 75. It did not define who I am. I fell by the way. So uh, I do the power plate. I walk. I put the dog. So I was walking almost two, three miles a day, but then my dog got thrown out of the car, so we can't walk so far. Um, I do yoga, walking, and what else do I do? Oh, ballet. The love of my life, ballet. But I've been kind of away from it with the injuries, but now I'm, I'm going back and things are coming back. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So, you, you know, you lead, an act, you lead an active lifestyle, basically. A very active lifestyle. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I, I don't feel I'm aging at the rate of other people, but I think it's keeping relevant. It's just as important as looking young. So what are you saying to stay relevant in your life? The, the mystics and the sages believe that we live in 10-year cycles. And so by the time you get to 70, you die. But you don't have to die figuratively. You may be dead if you're not putting out the universe anymore. You're not looking. You're not striving. You're watching the same judge shows on TV or you're you know, on the same cruise or going to the same place to dinner. You're not embracing and bringing. You're not thriving in life. You're just here surviving. And so that's a form of death, too. So I kind of believe that's what happened to me when I turned 70. I won't go into the whole thing, but everything was right away from my life. And I was forced to thrive again, to thrive. And it's been one of the most marvelous experiences of the seven years of my life. I'm living in. I just love that in an age when many people are retiring and winding down, you're just revving up new businesses, restaurants, endeavors. You know, I once heard somebody say, when you retire, you expire. Oh, I like that. Yes. When you retire, you, you have to have purpose. That's what we're here for, purpose. We're, we're symbiotically connected to each other. How can I, what can you get from me? What can I get from you? We're here to connect on every level. And we I see that happen to old people, kind of probably people my age, but it just kind of crowds in on them and they can hear less and they can see less and they're less interested in stuff going on. And it's kind of like you're just kind of going back to the grave, you know, and I'm like, I'm a ballerina. Let's get me up and out and <laughs> stretch me away. I'm not ready to go yet. Although when I am, it is what it is. Yeah. Let's see if there's any other quick. Oh, so, okay. So this is an interesting question because some of the vegan doctors say that mushrooms have to be cooked to eat safely. So Mary Jo says, does marinating them make them safer than just eating them raw? You know something, there's so many schools of thought out there on so many foods. I know that some mushrooms are poisonous. Uh, I know that there's problems with um, green peppers. I know there's a million back and forth. I am not scientific at all. I'm kind of intuitive with how I do things. So it's not like I'm eating a bushel of mushrooms all day, every day. I don't know if it's poisonous. I don't know if it's not. I know when you marinate them, they taste like they're cooked. So maybe it's doing a cooking thing. But, you know, I, I don't, and I teach this too, I don't look for perfection. I look for uh, consistency. How, what's going to keep me consistent? So having some children with some mushrooms, Today, if, if that's the worst thing I do, God bless me. You know, I, I just don't get a couple. There's so many, so much going on in our world. You know, 50 years ago, there was nobody to contend with or argue because it was just a few of us. And now there's high, raw, low, raw. This, I don't call myself that face. I don't call myself B. You know, our community is splintering itself in its own way, too. I don't know. We're just here on the same journey. Do what works for you. If the mushrooms don't work for you and the chili that I'm doing, it's somehow that, that resonates with you. Then um, what else could you use? Maybe, uh, oh, I'd have to think about that. There's because this is going to give it the meat flavor. Uh, maybe some of the other raw food is out there that you can throw some thoughts our way. But, you know, I just don't agonize over all those little thing, thing points that are important to me. But so I don't know. Yeah, and you seem very non judgmental about your approach with other people's diets. Absolutely. In fact, I think it would be a very boring world if everybody was just like me. You know, I would say I love zebras, I love them to death, but is that the only animal I want to? I want to look at all kinds the good ones, the bad ones, because we are all connected. No matter what your philosophy, no matter what your life, we are all connected on this experience. We're all going to. We've all been born and we're all going to die. And what do we do in the in between? We find ways to connect, not separate ourselves, but connect. Interesting story. There was a guy in my wellness spa uh, that went up north, and I'm going to be kind of politically correct here, but he had a plaid shirt and a trucker's hat, and he had a t shirt on, rifles on it, and it said, Death to the infidels. 
And so I'm sure he wasn't there for colonic control. <laughs> he probably was, but he was sitting there. And my dog came in and was looking at me, they were playing and whatever. So I walked by and I said, uh, what does your t-shirt mean? And he said, no, 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 because you know, I'm black, African American. My receptionist said, he didn't want to say what his true feelings were. He was kind of surrounded with us. And uh, I said, oh, what is your t-shirt? And he said, no, no, I said, I don't care what does it mean. He says, well, you know, we shouldn't have all these foreigners in our country and blah, 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 blah. And I said, oh, okay, I don't agree with you, but wow, look at how you're handling my dog. Do you know what I'm saying? So he was so loving and giving to my dog. I don't think like him, but we had something in common. And I can tell you, I know some plant-based people that are screaming and yell when they come around my dog, one of the best connections we have. So, you know, you find what you can work with in another human being. That's what we're here for. So please, all of my folks out there on my team, stop splintering yourself. I don't care if you're high, low, vegan, whatever. We all kill any animals. So absolutely i you know i I think people get focused so much on the minutia sometimes they miss the bigger picture and that that minutia can stop you it it can stop the whole process and so just going with the flow of what's working with you in the moment yeah absolutely i'm curious uh, you know you have children were your children raised in this healthy way of eating and have any of them maintained it well, my son is deceased. He passed away at 38. My daughter is 52, so I don't know if she'd be happy to say that. <laughs> she doesn't watch anything anyway. And um, she was brought up plant-based. Uh, when she became an adult, she made some other choices. She doesn't eat red meat and chicken and stuff. And she, she may occasionally eat fish or dairy. But the way I look at it is I brought her up with what I thought was right for her. As an adult, she has to do what's right for her. So my daughter was... a uh, plant-based. In fact, I used to give my children a week off from school uh, every semester because they stayed healthy, but the kids got sick. You know, because people reward you for being sick all the time. Uh, you know, oh, I can't come in today. I'm sick. Oh, poor you. My staff you knows, don't tell them you're sick. They're going to say, tap some well over right We're going to give you colonic and put you in a hyperbaric. You can't be sick around them, but you can say, I don't feel like seeing you today, Karen, or talk coming in. So I would give my kids a reward for staying healthy where other kids got rewarded for being sick. Um, when they turned to, when they got in junior high, they kind of went their own way with candy and other stuff they were doing, but I did the best I could. They couldn't get it in my house. You know, uh, the kids used to make fun of my kids for food and that, but you know, I did what I thought was the grocery shopping, so they had no choice. Nice, and has she aged as flawlessly as you? You can go to Santa. What, what is her? My daughter. This is, Santa. this is Santa. And you can look at her um, page. My daughter is brilliant. She has a um, documentary on, I know it's not a documentary, it's a show on HBO called Small Town News. She's done all kinds of stuff. She lives in LA. I miss her with all my heart. But she works out there. She's been out there over 20 years and working steadily. So she's a director, producer, writer, and drop dead gorgeous. Nice. And this is Santa. Is that the website or is that the Instagram page or? Instagram page. Yeah, this is Santa. And she's so funny. She's very irreverent. She's got a little potty mouth, you know, uh, but she's funny and people will crack up with her. So, yeah, that's my daughter, Claudia Nicole. We call her Nikki. And um, she's, she's a very special human being, too, because she's brilliant and beautiful. Thank you. I now wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about your detoxification program. Yes. Uh, well, I have several. I have the 28-day detox that I've taught for, uh, oh, about 40, 45 years before some of you guys were born because I learned it from Dr. Pignone's And then I have the 28-day. It's, it's very intense. But the results people get, I've had people with all kinds of diagnosis from uh, stage four cancers to endometriosis to Crohn's disease, all types of things. They've seen it turn around and it's nothing that I'm doing. I'm just giving them the, the, the journey to get their bodies back how it was intended to be. So it's amazing. I have a couple of books. One of my books is, uh, this is my program, but I would do it online with you in person. This is one of my books um, and it's the 28 day. Then I also teach a 10, a nine, no, a 10 day that uh, we're just kind of doing some supplements and things. It's kind of like dip your toes in. If I do a sugar break, now this is the one that I'm really pushing a lot these days too. Because I like to say, 
I, when I was a, a carnivore and became a vegetarian, I thought, oh my God, how do I do it? And then I went from being a, a vegetarian to a vegan. And it was like, really, this is how we're supposed to be? And then I went from vegan to being raw. And it was like, oh my God, I felt like I walked the water. And then I went six months without sugar of any kind, except uh, red pepper and maybe a tomato. That was, that was it. And then I didn't do fruit. Absolutely nothing. And I know I make a lot of fruitarians angry when I say this, but we need to go off that to that sugar also. And uh, I did six months of that and it was like a whole new level because what people don't understand is the glycosin actually aging in sugars. So that's your alcohol, that's all the different sweets you're getting. They age on. You know, I do this as much for vanity as I do for health. And I can see because the vanity part, everything out here is showing what's going on in here. Every line on your face is connected to an organ or something that's going on internally, which is why I choose not to do any Botox or anything like that. I'm not saying I won't do it at 95, but I want to see how far I can go. Uh, because I want to see, I want to see when I've eaten a box of mangoes out of stress, I want to see those leavens that people worry about. That's my spleen pancreas from too much sugar. So I don't hide anything. So the sugar break is a wonderful one to do. And then this little nine day revival, I'm calling it. And I have a little video about it on my Instagram page if you want to see. This one is coming up. It's starting this Monday and it will be two times and streamed. You can come with me or you can stream it. So that's it. <laughs> that's my detox. I have several that I offer. You, you know, I heard you say, even though you live and eat so clean, that even you detox several times a year. Minimum four times a year. And I truly believe that's why I'm enjoying the vitality that I do. Because it's, I, I, like, I know a lot of overweight raw foods. I know a lot of sick vegetarians. I know a lot of people because it's taking the time to clear out the old. It's taking the time to, you know, I, I use the analogy, if you got a punch bowl and you put a turd in it, the turd has messed up the whole punch bowl, right? But then you start putting some sprouts and some wheatgrass and some other stuff in that same punch bowl, the turd is still there, you know? So you haven't gotten rid of it. So you need to clean everything out to give the body, you know, a fresh start or as fresh a start as you can get. You don't go back to the beginning. And I will tell you, every time I cleanse and detox, I'm about to start my next week before I teach this class because I want to be on it during the class. Uh, every time I cleanse and detox, I learn more about myself, not just my habits, but even my soul. So there's so much to cleansing and detoxing. It isn't just about weight loss. It isn't just about, it's about getting in touch with every inch and part of your soul and your body. So every time I do, I learn more about me, which in turn gives me more to help others to learn too. Yeah. So uh, Tim would like to know, can you eat potatoes raw? Because if you steam it, it's no longer raw, correct? Exactly. Uh, so what you do, it's kind of tricky, but you start soaking the potatoes and you have to soak it one night and then you pour off the starch, soak it and pour off the starch. And sometimes it can take, um, and red potatoes, you only want to do the red potatoes. Uh, and you can, because I make a raw potato salad. But it's, it's a little uh, time. You just have to soak and rinse it until you don't see the starch anymore. And then you can chop it up and you can even marinate. Oh, maybe you could use the potatoes and it's chili if you don't want to use that. Just thoughts if you don't want to use the mushrooms. Nice. So there's a question from a live viewer. What do you do when you have a sugar craving? She's still struggling trying to give up sugar. So this is the reason I created the whole sugar break because I give you fenugreek seed capsules, I give you stuff with MSM in it, I give you things, I give you a lot of algae drinks, but they taste delicious, but I give you things to balance these things to, to kind of push everything down so the other star can come out, you know, the good stuff. So we balance your blood sugar levels. I don't just expect you to go, oh, I'm never gonna do this again. That doesn't work, but changing your body, body chemistry can work. And this is what I've seen work for the thousands of people I've worked with over the years. So I have specific things I'm recommending that come, you get a little kit. And from my understanding, all the people that have done it today, they do this and they set their attention and they lose their taste for sugar. I even have people go off food if I can take you that far. But I have a whole little process. There's a kit and you can go to uh, shopcarens.com and see the kit and all this. There are follow me on Instagram. I love to do these stories and talks on Instagram. Nice, thank you. Perfect, let's see. 
Okay. You know, I find that greens are the antidote to sugar cravings. At least that's what I have found. I don't have them anymore, but when I was really addicted to sugar, I found eating dark green leafy vegetables helped. Well, that's one of the things I have in the kit. It's a green smoothie. Or something. So that is a huge part of it. I agree 100%. So what I'm doing now is, because I should have done it before, um, but I'm putting the chopped mushrooms, and you'll have the recipe to put up, right, Chef? Yeah, I put it in the show notes. So if they're watching on YouTube, um, just go look right below the video, and the recipe's there. If they're watching on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, they'll have to hop over to YouTube to see the written recipe. So what I'm doing is, there's all kinds of ways to marinate, but I usually do it in um, these plastic bags. I get uh, a Ziploc bag if you have them too. And so it kind of coats them a little better and a little easier. And I call it, you know, I'm just going to eyeball this stuff, but I give you specific measurements. And I should have done this earlier, but while we keep talking, we're going to let these marinate. And I'm going to put some salt in here too, olive oil. And the salt, and I know there are people that have trouble with oils, and I know there are people that have trouble with olive oil. I use lots of olive oil. You know, one of the things that I realize about myself, the longevity doesn't come from discipline. It comes from managing, managing my life so I can make it really work for me. And maybe someday I won't want to do these things, but at this point, it's getting me to the next. It's not stopping the whole process. So this is Himalayan salt. I'm going to add that to it. And the salt and the olive oil, will make it cook. You generally want to let it sit for about 30 minutes. I do it a lot of times overnight. Um, and it calls for, I don't know, what it, how many, uh, oh, for two cups of mushroom. But you know what, at the end of it, more than two, that's okay. You know, you know, that's the beauty of a raw kitchen. You don't have to be exact. I'm not a great baker, you know, to be exact. But um, in the raw kitchen, you don't have to be exact. So I'm just going to let them sit while we talk a little more and get some more of the stuff ready because it's really a very quick, easy process. I did sprout the Zuki sprouts last night. Wonderful for your skin. Sprouts in general, this is, it's like the electricity of light in these sprout you eat. It's like turning on the electricity to get the light on. Sprouts are pre-digested so the body gets just energy from right away. You don't have to... Um, do any type of digestion. It's very easy, like juice down the system. And this huge jar, I, I call it for three cups, right? Well, the three cups started out down here. And by the time I finished rinsing and pouring, and I have, uh, in my book, there's a section on how to sprout. Uh, this is what I ended up with. This is how many sprouts. So it's way more than three cups, but we're going to make way more than we need to. Are there any questions while we're well, there's a question from Gary wondering when the last time is she cheated on a candy bar? <laughs> what kind of candy bar? Because they do make plant-based vegan ones. I make one. But if you're talking about a commercial one, uh, you know, I, it's not that I'm so good. That I just have no desire. You know, it wouldn't occur to me to eat a candy bar if you're talking about a commercial candy bar. I know as a kid, I used to love paydays. But I make caramel sauce with dates now. I do all kinds of things with myself. Right. Yeah. I mean, you say you're not a chef, but yet you have restaurants and you, you make beautiful food. I know. They say God takes care of food and children. <laughs> I just do it, chef. I just decide in my mind there's something I want to do. And it doesn't occur to me that I can't. And I've been that way my whole life. Yeah. You know, I went into what happened to me these past four or five years. My daughter likes to joke and say, Mom, I don't know why you haven't committed suicide. But it just doesn't occur to me not to keep moving forward. And maybe it's all these raw living foods and detoxing that I do to give me that extra little spark of life. How about that? Right. So there's a question. What is your favorite raw vegan decadent dessert? Um, what was that one that I make, Nancy, the... Um, the almond bar? Yeah, um, I, have, oh, I make an almond butter bar. But you know what? Here's what happens to me. I will have a, I will have something that I won't eat anything else for a solid month. And then I don't want to look at it again, you know, and then I come up with something else. I'm kind of like a camel, you know, <laughs> I kind of find one thing and I hone in on it. But I also kind of tell myself that maybe those are holes that need to be filled in my system. And so I'm just automatically going to what's most efficient for me. I don't know, that's a good excuse. But um, so what, what else is another favorite of mine? I do love 
apples with almond butter and stuff like that. But what's a what's a dessert I eat all the time? Let's see. Oh, the chocolate sauce. Oh yes. I, it's actually a commercial movie, but I make this chocolate sauce. It's called Chocolate Satisfaction, and I do it for my staff too all the time. I'll take the I'll take some flax seed and chia seed, and I put the uh, chocolate salad, you know, I'll slice some bananas on top of that and I'll put some more flax and stuff on it. And then I'll put maybe some raw vegan yogurt on it and I'll put my chocolate sauce. But the deal is, it's so rich that this much of it, I'm full. My staff is still, you know, they can eat the whole thing, a couple of them. But um, that's one of the things. Yeah, I do love my chocolate satisfaction. And sometimes when the stress really hits me, I'll just go and dip the spoon in the spoonful of it because that uh, makes me feel emotionally warm. <laughs> I don't know. Great, thank you. So here's a question. I love this question. What are your personal keys or hacks to raw vegan cooking or uncooking, if you will, Meadow asks? Yeah, what's a personal hack? Well, first of all, I don't throw anything away. Nothing gets thrown away. I have dehydrated. This, I have these same ovens in my home also. These ovens, um, these are the hydrators. You see, I have a dehydrator in my professional kitchen. I have gigantic dehydrators. So I think dehydration is a huge part because it's that, I don't know, it's maybe that emotional remembering of eating cooked food. It makes me feel that way. So I always, and in my house, I didn't bring them, but I have jars and jars of dehydrated stuff labeled. I don't throw anything away. That's one. So I always have food regardless. Uh, another hack is, I always spend one, I keep my refrigerator immaculate. I think it's so important to have a well-organized, clean refrigerator because when you open it up and everything's, you know, it just kind of, and your pants, things must be well-organized. In terms of food, I always have avocados around if I'm, you know, feeling in the mood for some fat or seeds and nuts. I always have something soaking. I usually have something sprouting. So I've always got something in preparation, but I don't think twice about going out to buy something too. Like uh, we have a wonderful health food store here in the shopping center I'm in, shopping mall called Sunrise, and they carry somebody's raw sprout salad, and you know it's a carrot salad, a pate, and some kale. Well, you know what? If I didn't make anything, I'm so happy that food's there. So I'm not really specific about what I have to have every day. I'm kind of instinctual, and. Uh, so I just always make sure that there's something around me beautiful and glorious for food too. And by the way, now that I live out here, I have a garden so I'm growing stuff. Great. Mary Beth wants to know, do you eat fruit? Um, you know, fruit for me, first of all, blood sugar problems run in my family. Diabetes runs in my family. And uh, fruit for me is kind of like a trigger. If I start, like... I'll eat jackfruit because that balances your blood sugar levels better. I'll eat blueberries, certain things, but man, a mango, I have to, I have to monitor. <laughs> and you know what? I don't even really monitor myself with those either because you know, if I want to do it, I just go for it. It isn't in my best interest, but emotionally it may be what I need in the moment. So yes, I do eat fruit, but I, I don't start my day off with fruit. I think that's a, a problem. Um, I eat some fruit. But not much. And here's the deal. I, I make the vegetarians angry with me when I talk about this on my Instagram. And uh, people don't realize the way we're getting our food is nothing like we were intended when man was created. We're supposed to be roaming the planet. You're supposed to be climbing up a tree to get your fruit. You're, supposed, you're not supposed to be sitting there waiting for an Instacart to come and drop it off at your house and eat mounds of it. And you've exerted no energy to feed yourself. Um, so it's, it, it's just, we eat way too much of everything, period, but, um, I don't eat a lot of food. So like, you want to take us through a day of food? I know you, you sound like you don't eat very much. You don't require as much food because everything you eat is so high nutrient. So, um, I have a product called Green Magic. It's a, it's a very high algae. Algae is the first thing on the planet for humans. And part of my sugar break, all my classes, we add algae because it's the perfect food for human beings is your protein, is your calcium, is your B vitamins. And so I have this very high energy. I got it through Victor, my teach, Green Magic, uh, and I sell it. So it's a um, algae with the cellular wall broken down so it goes right to your brain. So I have that. Uh, I, I start the day off with water. I have nothing but, and I do structured water. I don't want to go into that now, but it's another whole 
structured water, which is actually like food, so you're not hungry after you drink it. Uh, then after that, I may have uh, some wheatgrass or some sprout juice, or I may have something today because I was doing the show, I wanted to put something in my tummy. So I had some um, raw vegan yogurt with some Irish moss in it and spirulina. Um, and then when I get to work with my staff, you know, sometimes I'll have a coconut water. Uh, here's, you know, I do a lot of liquids and it isn't on purpose, but the reality is, is we don't really live on chunks of food. We're supposed to chew our food until it's a liquid and it's the gases from the liquids that actually feed us. So I just make it easy for my body wise, I'm going to go, you know, I go on and on because my body is just getting straight energy and a straight fuel and, and not a lot of digestive work. And then I may have a pate or something. Um, it depends on what my staff is doing or what I'm doing for them or salad or something. And then, you know, I'm really, my husband likes for me to have something with them. So I may have some mushrooms or a salad or, I don't know, I, food is not my big commodity of my life. You know, my spiritual practice, my, there are other things that are more important that I think about more than I do my food. Uh, but that's probably because I've done it so long I don't have to. I, I'm not saying anybody should be that way. Um, I will have a vegetable juice. I usually drink about 32 to 64 ounces of vegetable juice a day. Greens, mostly greens. Uh, and I've got them from my garden now. And I grew some purslane too. Dr. Wigmore was big on certain weeds with a lot of nutrients. I've got purslane I throw in there with everything. Yeah, I, I don't even got, but if somebody cooks a fabulous raw meal, I will eat everybody under the table. You know, I can, I can eat when you present it with a lot of delicious fruit sometimes. Right. When you say fruit, do you differentiate like sweet fruit from like culinary vegetables that are botanically fruit, like zucchini, eggplant, tomato, yeah. bell pepper, um, what are the other two, okra, and there's there's uh, cucumber? Absolutely. Between the sweetens and those, absolutely. But that's why I said when I did my six months without sugar, all I allowed myself were tomatoes and red peppers in terms of fruits. That was it. But yes, nice. I do different. Nice. Uh, uh, Carolyn said, would there be a substitute for the oil for somebody that would like to make this recipe? Um, what could we use instead of oil? Maybe hmm. like a whole food fat, tahini, or I don't know, something yeah. that. I was, I'm going to put avocado in it anyway. Yeah, you can use to be that could, Yeah. Mm. I don't have the oils. It keeps my joints moving. It keeps me more. And I understand the whole school of thought. I love Dr. Graham and a lot of people out there doing it that don't do any oils with that. And it's working for them. So I leave it. But I do do the uh, oil. Well, that's the thing. I think, I think there should, I don't think it has to be dogmatic. I think if it works for you and you're happy with your health and the results, uh, you, you know, you, you should see what, what works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I always tell people do the least restrictive diet that you can do. That'll give you the results that you seek and not, not copycat somebody else that might be getting different results because they're different. You got to keep it practical to keep it in practice. Yeah. Because otherwise people get, they have um, like, they don't do anything. You know, if they can't do it perfectly based on what, what, you know, what Dr. Greger says, you know, the 21 tweaks, the daily dozen, and not everybody can do that. Yep. You're supposed to find your journey, put as much good information in as you can, and your journey will unfold as long as you keep open and keep moving forward. Uh, one of the viewers says, what if you thinly sliced root vegetables like potato, sweet potato, beet, could you cook them in a dehydrator less than 115 degrees and make raw chips? Yeah, you have to you have to put a little something. You know, I used to do zucchini chips all the time, and all I used was uh, namashoya on it, uh, and then I would dehydrate. Um, yeah, you could. It, it may get crunchy and crispy too. Yeah, you could. It would just take a while. You know, and that's the reason that people don't realize dehydrated foods cost so much. It's the energy. You just here in California, and you can put it outside. You got it made. But if you have to use dehydrators, the energy that it uses is tremendous. It's like running a toaster 24 hours. That's why dehydrated foods cost so much. Yeah. There's a question. Do you eat any kind of seaweed? And if so, how do you prepare it? Oh, uh, that's, that's what I should have said when you asked what was my favorite. I am a seaweed fanatic. I love dulse. I love numbers. I love every kind of seaweed there is. 
I, I and I do get some seaweed in every day. Yeah, that's my big thing. So I love nori. Uh, I love dulse. Love wakame. I love all. I make seaweed salads. Yeah, that's my one of my favorite foods is seaweed. Yeah, and what is the most popular item on your menu at your restaurant? <sighs> raw. Yeah. Or cooked? Well, how about both? Uh, the raw restaurant. I think my and this is something I made up like. 15 years ago, it's my deep dish pizza. I had a raw deep dish pizza. That was a favorite. What was another favorite Nancy as well? well um, she can't think of it. We've the been waiting. Or the dim sum. My dim sum was a biggie, but I think the, the um, was, was the favorite. The, um, can't think oh. And then at the cooked restaurant, uh, where people love my soul food, my green beans, cornbread and rice. Uh, my chili, uh, my pizza. I made a pizza called Jerry's Pizza. It was for my grandchildren and my husband. Uh, and I put it on the menu there. I used to make incredible vegan donuts. That wasn't my recipe, though. Um, it was somebody that worked with me. But I would say my desserts, too, were a favorite of guys. And I always say that's how you get people on the team. You give them dessert. You don't give them regrets. Right? Absolutely. That's what Dr. Barnard once told me. You draw them in with the desserts and then hit them over the head with the kale. <laughs> right. Yeah. So do you, there, there's a question. Do you have a favorite sprout or a favorite vegetable? Uh, yeah, I love cauliflower. Love cauliflower. Don't, I love cauliflower and bread. The reason I love those two so much. Um, I love cauliflower and, and I love avocados. I can eat an avocado any kind of way. Nice. And so I, I know the answer to this, but somebody's saying, do you ever count calories or portion control your food? Never, never. And I never have. Um, I, I, you know, I don't see how somebody else can write a chart for my body. I don't, it's like what you were saying earlier, Chef. I mean, how can somebody write a chart for my mind? So I just know if I'm eating raw living food, I'm getting everything God intended me to have, the way he intended me to have it. So I'm not going to go very far wrong. I, I just can't see what's going go wrong. So like I said, if somebody makes, there's a woman in uh, La Porte, in, um, out here, she was, and she has a raw restaurant, the, the vegan cafe. She makes some of the best raw food you've ever, and they're not my own recipes. A lot of people like my stuff that I made years ago and being great, which I'm happy about. But hers is like all different and new to me. And I pig out when I go there. I eat almost everything on her menu. So some days I eat a lot, some days I eat nothing. It just depends on what my body, because I'm not breathing the same air every day. I'm not expending the same energy. I'm not doing the same anything except my morning routine. So why would I need the same amount of calories, you know, or protein? It just depends on what my body, and because I detox and cleanse my body, I trust you. Right. And you're a fan of eating when hungry because so many plans, like especially for weight loss or food addiction, have people eat at the, you know, whether they're hungry or not, it's specific times. Yeah, I, I think that when hunger hits, the body is asking for fuel and that's when you're supposed to give it. One of the things I teach in my class is if you drive by a gas station every day at 12 o'clock for this lunchtime and you put gas in your car, whether it needs it or not, depending on what it did the days before, you're going to have an overflow. And this is most of the challenges that people are met with today. It's the overflow of too much eating, even with healthy stuff, just too much eating, period. Yeah, I, I never understood eating by the clock. I mean, you know, that's like telling, oh, you have to pee at this exact time, you know? Right. Well, the other thing too is so much of that is for society to work. You know, everybody has to have lunch and work at the same time. The kids are, you know, it's making society work and I can understand that, but, you know, I'm not going to eat if I'm not hungry. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 you know, as children, we don't make them do it. But like you say, as we get to school or work, it's if you don't eat at your lunch hour, you don't get to eat. Exactly. Some people. Yeah, it's unfortunate. That's why I like being self-employed. <laughs> yes. Where do you get your olive oil? They're asking. Where do I get what? Your olive oil. Oh, well, this particular one, I'm not always this fancy. My cousin works uh, at a hospital and a guy from Lebanon, his family grows olives. And um, he's got these barrels of olive oil and I got like four bottles from her. This will be gone soon. When this is gone, I look for a good cold press. 
and I'm known to shop at TJ Maxx and get some olive oil sometimes. Nice. Irish sea moss. Yes, I, love, I do that every day of my life. I use it internally, externally. I put it on my skin. I'm just going to explain it. How do, you, how do you prepare it? Um, I guess I'm being prepared at home right now. I'll reach out this I could have showed you. I just soak it. Uh, and you have to soak it to soften it up and you get all the sand and the salt off, you know, and you rinse it a couple of times. I actually, um, what do I mean? Oh, yeah. I soak it and then I just put it in the blender. I mix with some water and it gels up. I mean, it is so easy. I have my assistant start making some of the food so we can have it done and done talking so much here um and i'm enjoying every minute of it but i want to be able to show you some food sure no we, we've got plenty of time it's just people have so many questions like for example do you have any beauty tips skin or hair care or makeup oh well i used to have my own makeup line years ago before all the natural makeup came out and it was phenomenal uh, i don't do it any longer because um there's so many natural ones on the market I'm a big user of castor oil. I use it in my hair. I use it on my skin. I make a mixture of castor oil and, uh, and uh, coconut oil. I use the Irish moss on my face. I sell a product called hyaluronic acid uh, that I put on my face. I put the Irish moss and then I have CBD oil that we sell also that I put on after that. And that's about it. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm not a perfect hair girl. I'm doing the best that I can because it's not my my house. I need a lot of help with that. But I do use all natural stuff in my hair too, castor oil, coconut oil. Nice. Um, Yesterday we had Chef Babette on who was also singing your praises and she loves coconut oil. And one of the things she said that what's really important is not just what you eat and sleep and things like that, but the mindset. Do, would you agree with that? Two thousand percent. And here I'm going to add to the whole plant-based diet with that. Because you see, what people don't realize when they're eating dead animals, that all of that energy becomes a part of you. Most of the population can deal with it and move forward, but I think so much of the horror and things that are going on in the world is because of the way we're treating the animals and then you eat them and that becomes a part of you. I think when you go on a plant-based lifestyle, it frees up your thinking to a degree. Uh, I, I think it changes everything. I haven't always been this person, believe me, I haven't always been who I am, 75 years old. It's been a work in too. Nice. Uh, where do you get your Irish sea moss? They're wondering. Well, I sell it. Um, so I have to check with the company, our supplier. I can't tell you off the top of my head. I know we researched it years ago because I've been selling and making it for 14 years now. We always use it in the raw restaurant. We use it to pick in things and, and make it. So I've used it. It's got a huge pop uh, popularity now, but we use it for years. So I have to check and see where my husband sourced it from. I can't tell you. Okay, thanks. And what is structured water? <laughs> yeah, I was hoping it's a, it's another whole. Um, okay, we'll we'll have you back. I've never heard that word either, so no worries. That everybody should investigate, if nothing else. But I only drink structured water. Yes, I brought it with me. I take it every day. Because you see, that's the most important thing to think about: is your water, right? Your body's seventy percent water. Your brain is seventy percent water. It's water your body wants. So it's and we have special juice, carrot juice, sprouts, whatever. Your body wants water, which is why I start my day off from fasting from the night before. And I know everybody's talking about intermittent fasting. Actually, that's another new craze. It's about not eating after sundown. It's about giving the body the water. There is a plan here for you, and it's very simple and easy to follow, especially once you take my detox classes because I lay it all out for you. Well, that sounds great. And Dr. Terry Mason sings your praises. Oh, I love him too. He's adorable. He just had a birthday. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you have the recipe for the recipe? Yeah, I'll make sure I get this. The one? Or are you going to use these in a different way? Yeah, they're going. Yeah. Well, we run it some. You know what? Put the sun-dried tomatoes in first. So I'm putting sun-dried tomatoes in. I'm kind of telling you what I'm doing. The whole, yeah, we can put these in. Garlic, garlic. And I'm just using a food processor with an S blade because I want it to stay kind of thick and chunky. I wouldn't put it in the vitamin. That would make it too much, too much like a juice unless you wanted it more watery. But, you know, I'm going to fill a bunch of people up. So we're going to run this for one second.
Any more questions? Let me look. I was watching you, so I, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking. We got the most popular on the menu. I've done that. Uh, do you eat? Do you eat papaya? I love papaya, and you know what? See, I take and dehydrate them, and I use them in a pepper mill because I feel like I don't know. I feel like I'm giving myself digestive enzymes with the pepper from, and it looks like pepper. I may even have one here. Yeah, this is papaya seeds in my pepper mill. So I save them, dry them. I told you I don't throw anything away. And uh, I use them like a pepper. And I do love papaya. But I got kind of spoiled because when John and Victor and I were in Costa Rica and I was eating the papayas there, it was nothing like the papayas here in Chicago. I'm telling you, maybe they have them better in California. I mean, you can get some good ones, but not like the ones we had in Costa Rica. You know, I'm allergic to black pepper, so I could try that papaya trick, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know what I did with the onions before? I mixed some of them in here. So, put like a half of them in here with the marinade. And then put the rest in there. Okay. Just added a little of the onions to the marinade with the um, mushrooms. And you know what else you could do with this? Is you could add a little nutritional yeast. Um, just to add an extra flavor. You know, I'm real big on layering flavors. I'm not vegan or raw food that likes bland food when I'm going to eat. Now, I eat bland most of the time just to eat, you know, to feed myself, but um, but I do um, like flavorful layered food. Mm. Huh? We're going to run real quick with this. So, you know what, let's just add our spices and things here too. I'm adding some chili powder. I'm going to take this one, but I'll see it now. We'll just eyeball it. Add some chili powder. Uh, I can't believe I didn't have in my garden. I didn't have fresh thyme. But I did the parsley we're using this from the garden. I'm gonna make it a little bit spicy. Keep ourselves warm from the inside out. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of thyme to it. We're gonna have our chips. We're gonna have chili very soon. Any more questions? Yeah, what is your favorite sprout? And do you make your own all the time? Yeah, my favorite sprouts are sunflower sprouts. And um, yeah, my favorite is sunflower. I do love buckwheat and um, my favorites are sunflower. And I do grow them myself too, but um, you can buy them just about anywhere now, but they're very simple. Cool. And everybody, you know what? Where you can do for yourself what you can. I mean, there's a whole movement out there that's worried about you know, homesteading and doing it. One of the best ways to always keep protein and calcium in your home is having some sprout seed. You know, they found uh, wheat berries in Tutankhamun's pyramid and they still sprout. So it's a perfect food forever. I have jars and jars of sprouts. I have fruit of seed so that I can sprout. So I always have food available to me. Nice. And there's a question, is that a Norwalk juicer behind you? And if it isn't, what is your favorite juicer? This is a pure juicer. Um, and these people, I had a Norwalk for years. And um, the pure juicer people um, redesigned it, and it is out of this world. I will be doing some classes with that. Um, you can follow them through Juicer too. They do the most wonderful foods, not just juicing. You should see the stuff that they come with this machine. I love the pure juicer, but I also jar too. So I have several juicers. Oh okay, yeah, we're gonna run again. We're almost, oh no, I didn't have a here. We're almost ready for you. Yeah. And do you ever water fast? Um, I don't 
just go to water fasting. I usually am juice fasting first and then I'll water. And I have to add, I don't believe anybody should ever do any type of fasting on any type of sweet uh, fruit juices or whatever. I feel it's dangerous. And um, I also believe you should always be doing enemas or colonics, which I learned this from Dr. Wigmore, while you're fasting because you're releasing the poison. If you're not getting rid of them faster, that's why a lot of people are still you know, sick. So we're about ready to put this together now. She said it smells delicious. I wish you could smell it. And there's no cooking. I'm going to do it kind of in stages. And here's the deal. I'm doing it to be funny in a cook pot because you could do all this. You could serve it raw or you could warm it up and serve it as a cooked chili, right? So it can work both ways. And I also have a cooked chili in the cookbook, a different one than this. But you could do this, um, serve it like I'm going to raw, have your meal, and then put it on the stove for the rest of the family to eat it cooked. And I also recommend that when people are cooking beans and things that they should uh, sprout them or at least rinse them before they cook them anyway, because you break down the enzyme inhibitors to make it easier to digest. So, my great grandmother used to teach she would make beans and you didn't pass gas because she soaked them before she cooked them. Well, you wrote a book, Soak Your Nuts, and also recommending soak your beans. <laughs> soak your beans, your legumes, soak everything. So I'm just kind of layering this in. And then I'm going to add, at the very end, I'm going to add a little um, avocado to it just to give it some fat. Very often, this is what... Oh, oh. Yeah. Doesn't it look like chili? Because it is chili. Can you see it? It looks. It looks so. It looks like chili. Really? It is chili. It is chili. And by the way, you don't have to use a zucchini sprout. Use you could um, sprout black beans. You could use just about. In fact, I made some uh, the other night with black beans for my cousin. So you could use the same recipe and change the bean quality as you like. Well, we got a lot of chilling here. You guys want to come over and join me? Huh? <laughs> I'd love to if you weren't in Chicago, where I grew up, by the way. Do you remember Marshall Fields? Absolutely. We went every year for Christmas to see the windows. and Absolutely. That was some store. Do you, re do you remember what a Frango Mint is? Absolutely. I think my husband's still eats them. Yeah. <laughs> Before I was vegan 45 years ago, those were my favorite candy in the whole world. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, um, State Street, Great Street. You know, it's not Marshall Field anymore. All that's changed, and it's a different world we live in, right? Okay, now I'm at my mushrooms and my onion. Oh, I hope I left enough room in the pot. Paige says, I love you, Karen. I love you back. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, uh, Babette, who's just a couple years younger than you, says not only doesn't she go to a doctor, she doesn't even have a doctor. I have not been to a doctor in 48 years. I don't get mammograms. I don't get pap smears. And I'm not saying that's right for anybody else. That's what works for me. Um, I, don't do, um, I don't go to doctors when I've broken bones. I have to go. Uh, but after my mother passed away from cancer, the doctors told me, well, your mother had cancer grandmother, blah, blah, blah. And so you need to have and all this four times a year to make sure that you don't get cancer. And somehow my young brain thought to myself, wow, I'm going to radiate my brain four times a year to find out if I have cancer in small tissue. I don't think anybody else needs to think that way. This is what went through my mind. And so I just never went. Um, so I've never, um, I don't, own a doctor. It was funny when my husband uh, retired and he had to get insurance. And so I had to get on my own insurance because um, he was going on Medicare. I didn't have a primary doctor to give him and the insurance company didn't want to insure me. And I said, well, I'm the person you want to insure because I don't have a doctor. I don't need one. But yeah, I like her. I don't go to doctors. It, it doesn't work for me. What about dentists? Do you still go to a dentist every now off, every now and then? That's the one area I have fallen down in my life. I haven't taken care of my teeth properly. And that's another whole emotional story. I won't go there. But they're fine now. I have a fabulous dentist. I have two that are um, holistic. One actually will give you uh, ozone instead of, if you request it, instead of, um, what is it they do? What is it? Root canals, yeah. So I have a couple of holistic dentists that I do recommend and that I go to myself. 
but um, I have fallen off the wagon. I have not been as good as I could have been. I'm going to serve some of this up now. Some avocado in there. And my staff is going to eat good today because this is enough chili for a month. Oh my God, that looks great. I mean, not, I don't know if you would do this as a raw fooder, but could you freeze it? Yes, yes. And I do free, freeze things. I mean, like I said, I keep it practical to keep it in practice. You know, or you know what else I might do with this? knowing me, I might um, blend the whole thing up together and what's left over and dehydrate it like crackers or bread. That sounds delicious. And then they're portable. Right. So I, I don't throw anything away ever. So I drive my husband and staff crazy with that. And it's got to be very beyond <laughs> looking like food for me to throw it out. I guess it's not that. Okay. Let's take a picture of this. It's a lot of silly folks. You can have a lot of people over for dinner when you do this. Oh, you know what else I could do with it too, like I did in the book. We kind of made it. You could serve it um, with some folks like this. Little serving suggestions. That is beautiful. That's a great idea, and it's beautiful. We could put it in a cooker. We could create a dinner party. Or we could serve it like this. This is my chill and chili Chicago winters. So wherever you are. For those cold I Chicago winters. I could have put lettuce around the outside of that bowl too. You know, food is so, it's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to awaken your, your digestive enzymes and you smell it so that your body can receive. The microwaves are so detrimental because your body doesn't receive any food, no color, no food, no smells. But this doesn't make you want to eat. I'm going to taste it for you. Okay, chef, I'll let you know what it's like. Mm. 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 Oh my See, you are a del you are a great chef. Mm. Let me go with it. Well, I just don't use the title chef. You know what? Also, go with this. In my book, Sprouted Wheatberry Crackers. You know, like you would have the oyster crackers or something with the chili. We could put um, Sprouted Wheatberry Crackers with it. We make this after we make the jubilee. We don't throw anything away. We can put some sprouted crackers in there. Oh, because oh, that was a question if you make or, or use for jubilee. So you do. That's great. Oh, I, that's part of the big part of my 28 day detox. I've been making and doing the jubilee for as long as I knew Dr. Whitmore. She's the one that brought it to us. Mm. You want to make this? Mm. Yeah. That looks great. Thank you so much, Karen, for this wonderful presentation and for all you do and all you've done and all the animals you've saved by being raw vegan for 50 years. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I feel so privileged that you invited me back to your show again. I think it's incredible what all you people are doing on our team now to get the word out. And you're just so perfect the way you do it and so professional. And I so appreciate you. And I remind people that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? Thank you I, so much. That, that is a great quote. That's t-shirt and mug worthy. <laughs> I've been saying it for years. Thank, thank you. you so much, Karen. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow as we continue with Longevity Week with Linda Middlesworth, who at 78 is not only feeling great as a long-term vegan, but has reversed both cancer and obesity. Take